What's up, Packer fans? Welcome into the Packer Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Had to represent the Bucks today. Huge game five win, moving to game six in Atlanta. Not going to talk about the Bucks. I would love to. If they win the championship, there will be a one day buck a day podcast. I can promise you that. But that day is not today. We still have a long way to go until we're at that point. So let's talk some Green Bay Packers. And today I finally wanted to get around to talking about Devondre Campbell. Obviously, Green Bay signed him uh, during, you know, uh, mini camps and OTAs, brought him in as a veteran linebacker. You know, kind of interestingly enough, you know, you look around all the different positional groups, you know, and you will find somebody who's at minimum going into their fifth year. Up until this point, the only position that didn't have that was linebacker. You know, you had Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones and Mercedes Lewis, David Bakhtiari, um, you know, Devontae Adams and Devin Funches at wide receiver. At defensive line, you had Kenny Clark, Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith at edge rusher, Kevin King at corner. You've got Adrian Amos at safety, Mason Crosby on, you know, kick, punt team, whatever, um, special team. So the one position that didn't have that veteran type player was actually linebacker. So, you know, Brian Gutekunst had mentioned, you know, after the draft that inside linebacker was potentially a position where they could look to add a player um, and really a veteran player. And I'm sure part of the reason is wanting a veteran presence within that room, especially when you have a group of players like, you know, Kamal Martin and Chris Barnes and Ty Summers and Isaiah McDuffie. That is a young group of linebackers. And it always helps, you know, coaches are going to coach, right? You're not signing somebody just so that they can be a mentor to players, but it's an added bonus when you can add in a veteran player to help mentor those players. And in general, you would like to have one person in each of those positional groups who can be kind of the veteran leader of those groups. And that will now be Devondre Campbell for the inside linebackers group. Of course, Christian Kirksey was that player a season ago. He's no longer with Green Bay. So Devondre Campbell becomes the de facto leader of that linebacker group just based on experience, age, years in the league, etc. So finally got around to watching his tape and actually grading his games. I went through and graded six games from Devondre Campbell and took notes and obviously, you know, did a deep dive into Campbell as much as I could through six games. Watched all six games from this past season, 2020, when he was an Arizona Cardinal. Of course, spent four seasons with Atlanta prior to then, uh, then a season with Arizona, now moving over to Green Bay. And through six games last year, I had a negative 1.7 grade on him. Uh, The six games I watched, week two versus Washington, week five at the Jets, week six at Dallas, week seven versus Seattle, week nine versus the Dolphins, and week 10 versus the Bills. So again, negative 1.70 grade over six games. So not great, to be totally honest. Um, If you would extrapolate that through an entire season, it likely would have been at or below my lowest graded player on the team, which was Preston. Smith. Um, Now, maybe his other 12 games, he was great or 10 games, he was great. And, uh, you know, he would have been in the positives. Who knows? Um, I know Pro Football Focus had a pretty low grade on him throughout the season. So my guess is for the most part, that type of play probably continued. So again, he probably would have graded somewhere towards the bottom uh, of of my overall graded players on the entirety of the season. So not exactly what you want to hear, but I did think there were some good aspects on tape from Devondre Campbell, as well as some things that ultimately Ultimately, you would like to see him continue to improve upon and work on and get better at as he becomes obviously what could very well be a core member of this Packers linebacking group. And before I get to the pluses and minuses, I think that's worth looking at in and of itself, right? So again, you've got Kamal Martin, you've got Chris Barnes, you've got Ty Summers, Isaiah McDuffie, and then Devondre Campbell, right? So to me personally, I think Campbell moves himself right in that conversation as a starting linebacker. I think Chris Barnes and Devondre Campbell are probably your top two to kick things off if I had to guess. And then I think, you know, maybe we'll see some Ty Summers, you know, maybe we'll see, um, you know, maybe we'll see some Kamal Martin. I think we'll see some, some Adrian Amos play some, some, you know, linebacker slash safety in a hybrid type of role. Maybe Vernon Scott gets a look at that position as well. But I do think that on base downs, your top two guys have a great opportunity to be Devondre Campbell and Chris Barnes. So this is a player that you're expecting and hoping can be, you know, a a good sound football player for a defense. You're not expecting him to be, listen, when you sign a, you know, veteran lower priced free agent in June, 
like this is what you're getting, right? You're not getting a top end player. You're not getting somebody that's likely going to change your defense. You're just looking for depth, talent, versatility, somebody who can help your team win. Even if he's maybe not the the one A guy that's going to again be the reason that your team wins, I think he can still help your team win. And let, let's go through some of those things of how he can do that. I think, first of all, the biggest thing that stood out to me was his athleticism. Now, this wasn't a player who was a, your normal Brian Gutekunst freak athlete, 9.99 RAS score or something like that. He was an above average tester. You know, one of the things that stood out was his speed. He was in the 90th, 90th percentile uh, with his, I think it was like a 4.540 that he ran. Um, so he's definitely quick, definitely explosive and, and tested above average in most of the testing drills, but not a freak athlete. But when you watch the tape, definitely stands out where he's more than capable of getting from point A to point B when he needs to. You see it show up in coverage. You see him, you see that speed and athleticism show up when he's shooting gaps and making plays in that regard. So you see that show up and that's something that he can definitely add to the second level of that defense. Um, it showed up in coverage when he's covering Antonio Gibson on a wheel route against Washington and he's able to stick with him down the field a little bit. You know, you see him being able to carry the seam route versus tight end. Again, his athleticism shows up in that regards as well. From a coverage standpoint, I really liked him in zone coverage. I think that he has the ability to get to his spots. I think he can kind of read and react. He has some veteran savvy to him. And I think overall he can hold up in this Joe Barry zone defense. Now I'll get to my negatives and more in just a moment. And one of the things that I'll obviously be talking about is his man-to-man -man defense and one of the things that he struggles with in that regards. But in zone, I generally liked what he was able to put on tape. And um, you know, I think that in this defense, he can fit ultimately what Joe Barry wants to accomplish. He's also a player that has the ability to be utilized as a quarterback spy. Now, change of direction, he's okay with. I, I, I don't think there's like, you don't watch him and be like, all right, he can't change directions. You know, any linebacker is going to struggle with the Lamar Jacksons of the world and things like that, right? But if you've got your your normal quarterback who's you know you know potentially running, making a move in the open field, Devondre Campbell is going to be able to stick with those type of players. And again, if you need a quarterback spy, Campbell's as good of an option as any other linebacker is that, that there is in this league to be able to spy players like that. And again, his overall speed is an asset in that regards, and he shows some ability to truly get sideline to sideline line as well. What, where I really enjoy watching him is on defense when he's able to shoot gaps. So whether he's coming on a, like a double A gap blitz, whether he's coming up the middle on a, a run blitz, whatever the case may be, if he gets a free run to the quarterback, you know, seeing that speed shown off and that athleticism shown off and be able to shoot those gaps, he is not afraid to do so. If he gets an opportunity, he will hit it. He will hit it hard and he will make plays in the backfield. There wasn't a ton of opportunity to do that, but when given the opportunity, he definitely showed out. And again, when you look at linebackers, and I've talked about this in the past, you'll see linebackers who are a little bit more passive. You'll see linebackers that are a little bit more aggressive. I think you want Devondre Campbell being aggressive and using that ability to shoot those gaps as much as possible. And again, using that athleticism to his advantage. Um, I think one of the things that he also does well is getting to his spot on the field. Uh, you definitely, he's, and I'll get to this in just a moment as well. You, you don't want him taking on a ton of blocks. So he wins by getting to his spot quicker than those offensive linemen can get there and then being able to make a play. And again, that all kind of goes into uh, using that athleticism and using him being a little bit more aggressive rather than passive. You don't want those offensive linemen getting out to him. You want him attacking specific space and being sure that he gets there first and is able to make a play and isn't out leveraged on the play. I also find that he's he hustles pretty well. Yeah, I, I don't. I've never seen a player. I didn't see any plays that stood out on tape where I'm like. All right, he's just not, you know, running to like he consistently rallies to the football. He consistently gets to his spots. He consistently is around the play, and he has a really good hustle overall. Um, you know, and just getting getting from you know one side of the field to the other when he needs to just doesn't give up on plays easy. And again, when you want a team of defenders that are rallying to the football, Devondre Campbell is going to fit in with that very very well. And then last but not least, they interestingly enough used him as some outside linebacker, almost like a three four edge rusher as well. As a pass rusher, he didn't do very well, but as a run defender, he was actually able to hold up and set the edge against the run um, much better than I ever would have expected him to be able to. So again, when you're adding a player like this, it's all about depth, versatility, veteran leadership. You're not looking for a blue chip player who's going to come in and change your defense. You're looking for all of those other traits. And I think again, overall, 
he's a player that adds to your football team. He adds to your program. He adds competition. And I think that's something that he's going to be able to come in, compete with those young linebackers, kind of you know, put his arms around him a little bit and kind of guide him along the way, but also provide some versatility and some depth for this linebacking group that definitely could have used it. Now, on the flip side, definitely some things that he needs to continue to work on. I thought he really struggled to diagnose plays and he really struggled with misdirection. Play action fakes, he was diving hard to pretty much whatever that initial fake was. Jet sweeps, jet motions, reverses, anything change of direction. I can't even tell you how many times in six games I saw like him just getting all over the place, read options. Like He just does not do well with diagnosing that type of stuff. When it's see ball, get ball, that's when Devondre Campbell can have success. When it's a situation where he has to sort through all of the stuff and you have to really make him think, he can struggle with that. So your Kyle Shanahan's of the world, your Sean McVay's and those type of games, when he's going against those type of coordinators, they're going to attack him a little bit more and try to use that against them. And one of the things you see with that is he'll be going one way and it's a misdirection. And all of a sudden the offensive lineman gets to his spot and now he's sealed off and you see him get out leverage. And this is not the most physical, big linebacker in the world. He really struggles to get off blocks. And if he struggles with that misdirection, now all of a sudden he's out leveraged. He's not going to be able to get off that block. And now a gap opens in the middle of the field and that can end up being a problem. So that's definitely something that I, I don't know if you can teach that at this point, but the linebacking coaches and linebacker coaches and defensive coordinators going to have to be aware of and figure out a way to kind of cover for that a little bit. As I mentioned, he's not the greatest at taking on blocks, not the most physically imposing linebacker. You're not going to see him just you know, consistently putting big hits on tape, more of a, a little bit more of a finesse type linebacker. Don't tell him I said that because uh, it, it certainly, you know, could take me on uh, without much problem. So Devondre, if you're listening, I, I think you're a very uh, tough and physical linebacker and I, I, I am only hoping the best for you, I promise. Um, struggles in man-to-man -man coverage a little bit. Um, I think the big thing here is he holds from time to time, grabs from time to time. So I, I thought he actually did a pretty good job of there's there's holding and then there's veteran holding and holding is you're a young player and you're beat and you're just holding on for dear life he has a little bit more vet savvy holding where he's holding but he knows just how much holding he can get away away with so it doesn't get called as much so it, it it's borderline like there were like four or five times where i'm like do i want to grade him negative on this play because he's clearly holding but at the same token he got away with it and his guy didn't get open because he was kind of sneakily holding. So it's a fine line, but there were, you know, there's one play where he got called for it. And it's definitely something that, you know, could come back and bite him in a big play moment where, again, if, if, if he's caught holding on a play, big third down, could move, move the chain. So you definitely see it. But again, as I mentioned earlier, I think he fits better with this zone defense that Joe Barry's going to be running really poor blitzer overall, you know, you'd see him get opportunities, you know, the old saying backers on backs equals sacks. If you get matched up a linebacker versus a running back that needs to create pressure. I saw too many st times he was stonewalled at the line of scrimmage by a running back or fullback and just overall, um, not a, a great blitzer overall. So that's not something that I think he's going to bring to the table with any level of consistency. Now, double a gaps, he gets a, you know, a, a straight on shot at the quarterback, Again, most players are pretty good with that, but that athleticism, that speed aids him in that. There are some things you can do with him as a blitzer, but if he gets blocked, whether it's by a running back or offensive lineman, um, that blitz is pretty much you know dead upon arrival. So uh, lack of playmaking, very few sacks, very few forced fumbles, very few turnovers. This is more a meat and potatoes. You see what you get. See ball, chase ball type linebacker. Not going to be the guy that's changing the game with big plays. Again, not everyone needs to be a playmaker, but you'd prefer to have some playmakers on your defense. Devondre Campbell, probably not going to be one of those. And then last but not least, some inconsistent tackling. Pro Football Focus actually had him rated pretty well as a tackler. I thought he was more inconsistent, more hit and miss. Um, there were games and, and plays where he had really good form, really good tackling. Other plays where players ran right through him and or just changed the direction, got him in the open field. So I think definitely, again, some inconsistency there is what I would say. But some some good tackling from time to time as well, just not consistent enough as you would like. So those are my pluses and my minuses. Overall, what are you getting in Devondre Campbell? Again, I think you can win with Devondre Campbell on the field. You're just not winning because of him. I don't, 
again, if you're if you're grading poorly, ultimately at the end of the day, you know you're you're constantly as a defensive coordinator and as a GM, you're going to be looking for somebody who can ultimately take his place. Hopefully over time, that's Chris Barnes, Kamal Martin, Isaiah McDuffie, Ty Summers, whoever that may be. Uh, but I think again, he adds depth veteran leadership. And I don't think he's a bad player. I think he can win, help you win out on the field. Again, just not be the player that you're getting wins because of. Aspects he can clean up, things that he does well, things that he can do better on. I think the last thing I'll say here is with players like this, you know, when you get a Christian Kirksey in, you know what Christian Kirksey's going to be. And he's probably a little bit on the decline. I think we kind of expected that, but you ultimately know what you're getting in Christian Kirksey. With Devondre Campbell, We've seen the same player now for basically five seasons in Atlanta and Arizona. This is who he is, but unlike maybe a little bit more of a, you know, six, seven, eight year guy, I do feel like Devondre Campbell has some meat on the bone yet where maybe just maybe if he gets the right players around him and the right coaching and playing behind a Kenny Clark, maybe he can be better than what he's shown so far. Am I holding my breath on it? And do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. But I do think he still has some potential there that is yet to be untapped. And maybe he's just a late bloomer. That'd be nice if you were Green Bay. I think that's mostly wishful thinking, but I do still see a, a spark there where uh, there, there's something there that I'm hoping can still develop. Again, don't expect it. Don't think it's going to happen. I think we're ultimately probably going to get the same Devondre Campbell we've seen through the past five seasons, but we'll see. We'll see it as training camp comes along, preseason comes along, regular season comes along. I'm excited to see what Devondre Campbell can bring. And if he can even just be a slight upgrade over Christian Kirksey from a season ago, I think this would be a pretty big free agent signing and a nice pickup for Brian Gutekunst this late in the process. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Always appreciate it. Make sure to check out Andrew and Kyle today on the audio podcast. I'll be right back here tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.